My name is Mr Ross Fordington and I'm an orthopaedic trauma consultant working at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Birmingham. We appreciate that the suggestion of having a metal frame applied to your leg for approximately one year can be very daunting. Your surgeon will discuss with you what your individual treatment options are and what are the pros and cons of each option. Sometimes, however, a frame is the best option. The purpose of these videos is to help answer some of the questions that you may have and hopefully we can alleviate some of the stress that is naturally linked with this surgical procedure. During the next few minutes, we will take you through the process. Some patients are unfortunately injured and are brought in as emergencies requiring our services. Alternatively, some patients choose to have a frame for the planned treatment of their longer term condition. Whichever group you find yourself in, hopefully you will find this helpful. In this video, we will show you some of our patients that have kindly agreed to be filmed during the different stages of their treatment. My name is Miss Bowes, and I'm one of the orthopaedic trauma consultants. If you sustain a significant injury that requires this sort of treatment, you may either have been admitted directly to us at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, Birmingham, or you may have been transferred to our care from another hospital. Initially, you may have a temporary treatment, such as a plaster cast or temporary external fixator. These look a bit like scaffolding and are used to hold the broken bone still. The next step is usually a bit boring whilst we wait for the soft tissues, such as the skin and muscles, to improve and become less swollen. You can sometimes be waiting as an inpatient on the ward for over a week. Once we feel the soft tissues are settling, we will arrange the next operation where we apply the circular external fixator. This is a stronger frame that allows you to walk using your broken leg. You will be fasted so that it is safe to give you a general anaesthetic and you will be asleep throughout the operation. You will be brought from the ward in your bed to the anaesthetic room. Here, one of our anaesthetic team will insert a plastic needle and put you to sleep. Sometimes, they also give you a local anaesthetic injection around the nerves to help numb the leg so that it is more comfortable when you wake up. This is called a block. The operation will take a few hours depending on the complexity of your injury. During the operation, the temporary cast or frame are removed. The leg is prepared with antiseptic and the frame is applied. We use a combination of fine wires and half pins to hold the bone in the correct position within the frame whilst it heals. Although the wires look small, they are strong enough to hold your full body weight and you will be encouraged to use the leg as much as possible. The half pins are called half pins because they only go halfway through the leg. These are used because they may be an important structure on the other side of the bone, for example a nerve or blood vessels. At the end of the operation you will wake up in the theatre recovery area. Once you feel comfortable and wide awake, you can return to the ward. Over the next few days, you will then be seen by a number of specialists, including physiotherapists, ward doctors and nurses and our specialist frames nurse. During this time, there will be a lot of information to take on board, but for the best outcome, it is crucial that you work well with each team. It is also essential that if you do smoke, then this is stopped immediately as it is associated with delayed bone healing. Unfortunately, it is the nicotine that causes the problem, so e-cigarettes and nicotine replacement therapy must also be avoided. Hello, my name is Paul Fenton. I'm one of the orthopaedic trauma consultants in the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. In the limb reconstruction unit, we use a variety of different circular fixators. When you meet other patients, don't be surprised to see patients with frames that look different to yours. Each frame is chosen and constructed to treat individual patient and injury needs. There are two basic types of frame that we use. 
the first used as a method originally pioneered in Russia to treat Second World War veterans. It's named after its designer, Ilizarov. The frame is typically a straight cylinder with threaded vertical rods connecting each ring. The other type of frame is a hexapod fixator. This uses six diagonal struts to connect two of the rings and allows computer software to program frame adjustments in multiple planes. With both fixators, the bone may not be straight initially, and you may be given a prescription, sometimes called a schedule of adjustments, to lengthen or shorten some of the struts or connecting rods. This is done very slowly, usually at one millimetre a day, to allow gradual correction of deformity and new bone formation. Once the prescription has completed, you will be seen in clinic for x-rays to check that the bone has corrected as planned. Once the bone length and alignment are restored, the next phase is to wait while the bone heals and strengthens, prior to frame removal. Although the frames look different, they rely on the same biomechanical principles. When you actively walk and load the leg, this allows micromotion at the fracture site, which stimulates bone healing. It is important that weight bearing is commenced as early as possible and the physiotherapy is undertaken. This will encourage the bone to heal and decrease the amount of time that you have to have the frame on. My name is Philippa Bridgman and I'm the clinical nurse specialist for the limb reconstruction team. After your operation, you'll be brought back to the ward. Initially, your leg may be quite sore, and it is important that you keep it elevated on some pillows to help decrease the swelling. The swelling stretches the skin and soft tissues and can be painful. Please discuss your pain with the ward doctors, nurse specialists or ward nurses so that painkillers can be prescribed and given to keep you comfortable. Over the next day or two, you will be seen by the physiotherapists to help teach you how to walk with crutches or a frame and get up and down stairs if you need to. You may feel nervous, but we hope you will soon be on your feet and once you feel confident, we can plan your discharge from hospital. The occupational therapists will discuss any home adaptions you might need, such as a stool to rest on in the kitchen or bathroom, or even having your bed brought downstairs initially. Before you leave the hospital, you will be seen on the ward and taught how to look after the wounds around the wires and pins. This is called pin site care. You will also be taught what the signs and symptoms of infection are. You are likely to develop a superficial skin infection at some point, as the skin is a barrier designed to keep the bugs on the outside. As the wires and pins go through this, it is common to get a pin site infection and this can be easily managed with a course of antibiotic tablets. It is therefore important that you know what to look for and what to do. We've made a separate video that will explain pin site care in more detail. Although you are discharged from the hospital, if you have any concerns, then please get in touch with the nurse specialist or one of the team so that we can work together to try and resolve any challenges you face as soon as possible. You will have regular appointments with the surgeons or nurse specialists in clinic and you will be assessed by the physiotherapists to agree a treatment plan. When you are ready, you'll be encouraged to attend the limb reconstruction physiotherapy class held in the outpatient's physio gym. This will allow you to work on strength and range of movement at your joints and ensure that you're doing your exercises correctly. It can also help to get support from other patients that may be further into their treatment. For example, strategies for living with a frame, such as what clothing can be worn or adapted to fit your frame. Occasionally, patients can feel anxious, distressed or depressed even, or perhaps just not their usual self. This is normal and can be quite common in people undergoing the sometimes long limb reconstruction process. Being involved in any trauma or accident can also be worrying, particularly if you were seriously injured, so it's not uncommon to be affected afterwards. Usually, these feelings go away over time. Even if you don't feel like talking about it, it might be helpful to talk to friends or family about how you are feeling. You can also speak to the clinical nurse specialist or another healthcare professional, such as your GP, about getting some extra support if you need it. 
This could be a psychological therapy service, such as Birmingham Healthy Minds, which you can also refer yourself to via phone or text. Even if you're thinking you don't want to bother anyone, just let someone know if you're struggling. Ask yourself, what would you do if it was a friend or loved one that needed your help? You'd probably be happy to help them. So don't feel like you're on your own. And remember, we're here to help you if you need it. Towards the end of your treatment, you will see the surgeons in clinic. They will use a combination of x-rays and clinical tests to determine when it is the right time to have your frame removed. They will often suggest that at the next clinic appointment, it might be ready to be removed. However, this will depend on the x-rays as well as your symptoms. Please don't be disappointed if they decide that it needs a little bit longer. If they advise that the frame can be removed, we often loosen a few struts or rods, but leave it mainly intact. You will be permitted to continue to mobilise and we will review you in clinic in a few weeks. If you have no problems, the frame can be removed. We regularly do this in clinic and this can come sometimes as a shock. We will provide you with a gas and air called Entonox, which is a gas that women use in childbirth. We can also inject some local anaesthetic around the half pins to numb the skin. The frame is gradually dissembled and the wires and half pins are removed. Most patients tolerate this very well. If you would prefer a general anaesthetic, this can be arranged. However, it will mean that you're in the frame for a few more weeks while a space in theatre is created. Once the frame is removed, you will be provided with either a cast or a boot to give it a little bit of protection while the bone continues to solidify. Your surgeon will discuss with you what your individual treatment options are. If you undergo a procedure to apply a frame, it's essential that you stop smoking. This includes e-cigarettes, as the nicotine slows the bone healing and this means you'll have to wear the frame for longer. A variety of fixators can be used, so yours may look different to other patients. It is likely you will have the frame applied for several months and quite often up to one year. Some frames require small adjustments to help straighten the bone and this may be as often as four times per day. You will learn how to clean the wires and pins of the frame and prevent them from becoming infected. When ready, you will be encouraged to attend the physiotherapy exercise sessions. To help us assess the bone healing, you will be x-rayed at most clinic appointments. Towards the end of your treatment, the frame will be gradually loosened to test if the bone is ready for the frame to be removed. When the frame is ready to be removed, it will be disassembled in the clinic and the pins and wires removed. We then use a cast or boot to provide a little bit of support while you get used to not wearing the frame. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it has answered some of the questions that you may have and also given you a clearer understanding of what frame treatment involves. I would like to thank our patients that have allowed us to film them during the course of their treatment. These videos have been generously supported by the Queen Elizabeth Hospital Charity and I'd like to thank them on behalf of the Limerick Construction Team.